Hey there, I'm Lindsay Zarniak, and this is Players, episode one of the Washington Nationals' journey to World Series champions through the eyes of pitcher Max Scherzer. So by talking to Max, his wife, and teammates, I discovered there were so many different themes to this story. In this episode, you're gonna follow Max, the night the Nationals earned a spot in the World Series, and you'll learn how a former teammate was just as important to this team's success as the active players on the field. We begin, though, after the World Series win inside the Scherzer's home in Northern Virginia. Max giving his perspective on realizing his childhood dream, finally winning the World Series. This conversation starts, though, with a little bit of fun and learning a little bit of Max behind the scenes. Your house is really quiet. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh, no. It's usually chaos from 7 in the morning till 7 at night. Really? Why? Uh, Take me inside the, that Either chaos. the dogs, crying kids, somebody. Something's always breaking. So. Okay, wait. So let me tally again. Six dogs? Four dogs. Four dogs, two cats. Her cats. Her cats. Her. You're what? You're, you're I got the dogs. I, I take care of the dogs. <laughs> you don't want a part of I the cats. I don't do anything for the cats. You're just, are you, are you like anti cat or you don't really? Uh, I got dogs. Okay. <laughs> got it. Okay. So four dogs. Are you solely in charge of the dogs? Yep. Yeah. I, I run those little suckers around. So okay. uh, I'm in charge of getting their energy out. And kids, we know that you're very involved. You do bath time and all that stuff. Yep. 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 But see the cat. <laughs> so, so what people you didn't know, just see know. was the cat on cue came in and tried yeah. to jump on you, and you just no, pushed no, no, it no. away. We, we don't. No, <laughs> bust her nose. <laughs> Are you allergic to cats? I wish. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what is it like for you in your in your normal life to just be in your house in your own space? Uh, off season, usually getting out uh, on a good day. Uh, across the river, there's a good uh, canal, uh, and on that canal, there's a good path, and I usually go over there with a, get my bike and bike all the dogs together and all their energy out. It's a real cool scenic scenic ride um, where they can run. You know, they're they're pretty well contained. Uh, and they can chase all the squirrels that, that they want. So they, they have fun over there and then uh, just come so down. So you're riding your bike and they're just running. Yeah, yeah. They're all off-leash trained. So they, they'll heal to me on the bike and then they'll call, when I call them, they'll come back for the most part. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's the only way I can get their energy out. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the, there's a trainer here in town. Um, and I, we did when we first got our first two dogs. Uh, they had so much energy; they kept bugging us. And I, I mean, there was times where I was biking like seven miles, and it just didn't do anything. Uh, I, I couldn't, keep, I couldn't keep up. Like literally, I couldn't keep up. And so, uh, finally, this guy in town, he trained. They him, were got, running you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after doing all doing workouts, like I'm having to bike seven miles for these dogs. Like <laughs> I, I can't do this anymore. Um, and so, uh, you know, once we got him off, we trained. Um, you know. That it, it was life changing. That I could get on a bike, and then they heal me on a bike. I was like, oh my gosh! Well, now I don't even need a pedal. And then found out there's electric bikes. And once I got on the electric bike, realized it has a little throttle. And then now they can run as fast as they want, and I can keep up. So you're kind of on a scooter. <laughs> yeah. Or, okay, so you don't have to pedal. I don't have to pedal. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it way easier. Easier is exactly what Max Scherzer deserved because what he and the Washington Nationals had just done, there was nothing easy about that. The team started off with high expectations, but they found themselves with a record of 19 and 31 in late May. I became intrigued following this story because of how there were so many different players who made an impact. That was a clear theme, and that included former Nationals outfielder Jason Wirth. Jason had retired two years prior. He's been spending his time recently focusing on his other love, which is fishing down off the west coast of Florida. Jason, though, has always stayed connected to the team. He shared with me, in fact, a conversation he had last May in Washington, taking in a game, sitting next to general manager Mike Rizzo. I kind of sat with Mike Rizzo and and we were talking and he was, you know, he was upset with obviously the team that the way the team was performing, but you know, he, he, he was blaming himself. This is all, this is on me. You know, I got, you know, and so he, he, he took uh, you know, he, he's a, he's a take charge kind of guy, take a bull by the horns. And, you know, it, it was kind of like leaving there that night. That's, that's, I remember that. And then the other thing, um, uh, Soto was, was really, was really struggling. And, um, I saw him in the hallway on, on the way out the door and I grabbed him. I'm like, Hey man, like, like, you know, yeah, I was kind of a slow starter uh, across my career. You know, I was only on one all-star team because you know, I felt like, you know, if I would have 
played good in April, I probably would have made more all-star teams. So my Aprils were usually so bad, but then I made up for it, you know, as the season went on. So I grabbed them and I was like, hey, you know, like, listen, like you can, you know, a good month later on, we'll take care of this bad month. You know, don't, don't worry about it. You got, you got a long way to go. You got, you know, 500 and some odd of bats left. Like got a lot of season to play. Don't let it get you down. But hopes were down, as you can imagine. But for Max Scherzer personally, he had actually found something that was changing his pitching performance for the better. Things that we had set out on as a mission in spring training uh, really started to transpire. And I think that's when we start turning the corner and why we were able to uh, write the ship. Was there anything that you found yourself changing like during that time that you were struggling, like any process that you have for yourself or whether it's like in your preparation or your actual yeah. starts? Yeah, I was I, I was getting better as a pitcher. Um, yeah, that's my number one goal is the way I set out now every single year is to get better. Um, I don't really set any other goals other than what's, get win the World Series and get better. Uh, critique yourself, <laughs> look at the video, look at the hits, okay. look at the strikeouts, You know, watch, watch what's going on, pay attention to the rest of the league. Do you think what, some people don't look at the video? I don't know. Okay. Um, you have, everybody Everybody has their own way of going about it. Um, for me, I just know I have to look at everything. You know, that, that's okay. including looking at the rest of the league, look at the other top guys in, in the game and what they're doing. Um, and critique yourself and see, see where you match up and where you don't, and try to find new, different ways to execute your pitches better. And um, for me, I thought I found a little um, uh, lane where I could execute my pitches in a little different way uh, that uh, I had. Th I thought I was going to move in one direction, and it turns out I should be moving in a different direction. Really? And that different direction was was the right way to go um, from what I thought I was going to go out into the season with. And so um, for me, once I kind of got the feel from that. Uh, I felt like that's why I really turned the corner around in that, that mid-May um, okay. into June, and I, I feel like that's why, my, why in June why I was really throwing the ball as well as I ever have. Is there anything else? Well, maybe you just can't share much. Um, just, just how I was um, attacking both right-handed and left-handed hitters, uh, okay. what I was doing with my mix, and really um, at that point in time, uh, really getting in sync with uh, you know Kurt Suzuki. Um, you know, really working gotcha. with him and him, he was really starting to understand everything that I was trying to do, trying to implement, um, and, you know, and we, it just started to take off. Like we really started gelling together, really understanding situations. Um, he was calling some pitches in some situations that, uh, you know, I'm like, man, this is a crazy time to throw a curveball, I mean, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> So did the Nationals' plan of resilience, and that's because of manager Davey Martinez, who kept stressing to focus on 1-0, just play one game at a time. What the Nationals did next, truly unbelievable. They went on to win 74 games after that low spot in the season. They earned a spot in the playoffs, beat the Brewers in the wild card round, they beat the Dodgers in the NLDS. Against the Cardinals in the National League Championship Series, Max Scherzer came close to pitching a no-hitter. They found themselves one win away from a chance to go to the World Series. For Max, this would be his second trip. He was on that Detroit Tigers World Series roster in 2012 with his current Nationals teammate, Anibal Sanchez. I sat down with Max before Game 4 in the dugout. He talked about what was on the line that night. When you think about like where the team started, um, you know, a few months ago even, and where you guys are now, what is that like? like what What did you expect? I don't know. We we're playing good baseball. Um, all in the second half, we were playing good baseball. Uh, we were getting healthy, and we're a good team. We knew we were a good team coming into this year, and I guess not surprising that we're playing uh, good baseball with the with the best teams in the league. What's it like for you, though? It's incredible um, <laughs> because it's so much fun because it's such a team. Um, everybody's had a moment. Everybody's had and stepped up. How much fun are you guys having? I mean, that, that is like the secret sauce, right? And it looks like that's what's going on. Is it yeah. something that you feel? Uh, I mean, it's just the it factor. I mean, you can't describe it, but you know it's there. Um, and so for me, uh, you know, just to be on that clubhouse and the, and the amount of fun we're having together and just how we can just stay loose and... Um, you know, just, just enjoy this moment. Yeah, when leave. you're smiling, what are you thinking about? Oh, all the stuff that we're doing. <laughs> all the crazy like what? Stuff. Come on. Uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> You've been here before. Well, first of all, I want to ask you because you look like a caged animal sometimes. I mean, the other night when you were pacing down here in the dugout, right? What's going through your mind? Oh, man, you're just enjoying this. I mean, this is the baseball that's highest level. Of the, the, um, you can't ask for anything more. I mean, you know, this huge playoff series. Um, we got the World Series on the line, you know, trip to the World Series. So 
uh, you know, every pitch you know matters. It, you know, the postseason is nothing like the regular season, where and you, the regular season you, you know you lose a game, you're like, all right, if we win two out of three, we're doing good. Uh, no, you're trying to win every single game, every single pitch, every single bat, and uh, you're living and dying by every single game here. And so uh, it's fun to cheer on your teammates and be just as much into it every, uh, every single game. Just because we're up 3 nothing, we haven't won anything yet. You can't have that mentality that, you know, you know all right, history's on our side, but not not, not not with baseball. Baseball, anything can happen. You can win four games in a row in baseball. So You've had such a stellar career. Can it get better, you know? Yeah, win the whole thing. Yeah. It was that simple, and that night, Max would get one step closer because the Nationals swept the Cardinals. The atmosphere was electric as the team partied on the field. I went onto the field and I saw Max. He had found his wife, Erica. They were hugging, and I remember when he looked up, I saw his eyes, and there were tears in his eyes, and I was thinking as I watched them sparkle like diamonds, and his smile was so wide, I knew it was probably gonna hurt the next day. I asked Max's wife, Erica, what the pivotal moment for her was in the midst of this whole championship run. She actually took it back to that very moment. What would you say um, was the pivotal moment for you in all of this? Oh, gosh. When they clinched, the NLCS, seeing him on the stage, like looking at like when we caught eyes, same thing with the World Series, but probably the NLCS because it just was like, we're going back. Like there was just something to it. Um, but even just with the World Series, once they got that final out, just like falling into the seats crying, just like it really, it was this sense of disbelief. Like it really happened. Like it just, it was amazing. On the field, I will never forget this. At some point, I looked at Max and he was screaming at the top of his lungs, we're going to the World Series. I left that scene and that's when I ran into former Nationals outfielder, clubhouse leader, Jason Worth. He was just watching, he was soaking it all in. He said that very night, Juan Soto had sought him out on the field because of what he had said to Juan months before. He came over to me and, and, uh, and grabbed me and was like, he thanked me for that advice. Like, so it was, it was just, you know, it was just a lot of stuff that, that went into it that was, uh, it was, you know, just it was pretty cool for me. Like, but when I asked the question, why did he come back? Why did he feel it necessary to be there that night? Here's what he said. For me, it felt like, um, you know, a chance for closure and, and just kind of like mission accomplished if they, you know, if they could see this through. So, um, and, you know, guys are getting older, things change. So you know, the team might not look the same the next year. So it was really like a chance to see like pretty much the same team that I was playing on um, succeed. So. Flash forward for just a moment to the night the Nationals won the World Series. That answer took on a lot more meaning when Max Scherzer referenced Jason Worth in the middle of an interview. JW, as everybody affectionately called him, Max was talking about how the team had found a way to win. The first thing I said when I, when I signed here in Washington was I came here to win. That was it. That was number one. You know, if, when I was in the free agency and nobody wanted to sign me, and no, nobody wanted, everybody thought I was an injury risk. Um, Nash, Nationals came through, and I, you know, was able to look at their team, saw their team, uh, saw they had great talent, and came on board. And I just wanted to win, and from there, you know. J you also have to give Jade up credit for, I mean, he, he signed here before us. He helped, he helped change the culture around here. He deserves credit about this too. Even though he, he's not on this team, his effect of what he did in this clubhouse, about the culture he created, and what we've been able to take and keep on going, um, he deserves credit as well. It was so surprising to me that Max would mention that. So I shared what Max said with Jason Worth, and Jason texted back saying, I can now close the book on my career. And I thought, wow, what does that mean? Max would actually later put that comment into perspective for me. Jason once said to me, I can now close the book on my career. I congratulated him and he said, I can mm -hmm. now close the book on my career. And I thought, what does that mean? Right? Yeah. What does that mean? Um, what is, why that, did you bring him up? Because uh, you know, when we got here and the good teams that we had, um, you know, he was our clubhouse leader. And you know, I, I was really good friends with him. And, play with him and been in some real battles with him and, you know, talking to him about where, where this organization was even before I got here. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he was the big free agent that started this, uh, of getting here and turned the tide, turned the culture, uh, what it, you know, he came from Philly where he won a world series and, you know, 
being on those, uh, I think the 08 Phillies team of like how good that team was. And that, you know, I've been on some good Detroit teams. I know what a good team looks like and you know, how, how you describe what Washington was and the things that had to change um, in the culture, just the, the things that were going on here that had to change that uh, he was instrumental part. Like um, what? Is there an example of some type of thing? Just, just different things that happened. Um, it's hard to really put in words okay. that, that, you know, for me, uh, getting here and seeing that he was a clubhouse leader and really seeing how he led uh, his attitude towards the game, how he grinded um, his approach, everything. And, you know, I love how you know, love being a teammate with him, and um, you know, we really wanted to win one with him. And uh, even though he retired, uh, his impact on this team and this clubhouse uh, it was still felt felt um, through, you know, really specifically I can actually now. Uh, the changes he made to the medical staff and what he, how he envisioned our medical staff was, um, I, I really feel like we have the, one of the best medical staffs in the game, if not the best. Um, and that's, that was as a result of, of J-Dub and, you know, what we want to do in, in the kitchen and get, make sure that we, you know, eat good food and, you know, he, he's gluten free and he's, he, he's, or, he's organic. <laughs> he's organic. I have fun with him with that. Um, but just a, you know, those are just little things where he had his fingerprints still in this clubhouse, still in his team. Uh, we were able to, we were able to do things like, you know, in the clubhouse, like uh, with the training staff and the player care and, and um, you know, how really how the, the organization really looked at um, investing in the players and taking care of the players um, on a level that was really not, um, uh, and I don't know what all the other teams were doing, but I know what a few teams were doing. It really wasn't on the same level as, as most organizations. They really invested um, money in, in, in which, you know, doesn't seem like it'd be that, that hard of a thing to grasp that you want to, you know, you want to take care of your players. You want to feed them good, good food. You want to have nutritionists on staff. You want to have, um, you know, medical staff that, that uh, is not reactive, but proactive. You know, we, we, we joke that, you know, players win ball games, but healthy players win more ball games. We kind of set that into place, and it took some time. And and uh, and by the time that I I left, things were things were really set up, I think, um, for those guys to su succeed. And that kind of laid the groundwork for this, uh, you know, for their championship run. I, I believe. And for Jason, the move to sign with DC as a free agent, it, it was controversial. By the team winning, he was in a sense proving those doubters wrong. It was uh, it was it was tough and it was it was criticized and and 2011 was a really tough year to kind of get the kind of get, get the boat steered back in the in the right direction and and um, you know I had a tough season myself and and just with all the stuff that was you know the the Nats when they took over the team you know they were they were the MLB didn't do them any favors they were given a they were given a team that. It was uh, was being managed by MLB and, and you know arguably run into the ground. So uh, the owners had a had a tall task, uh, the learners to get to kind of turn the uh, turn the ship around themselves. And Mike Rizzo and 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 kind of I was their first you know free agent that that came there with the with buying into their vision and um, and you know that this team could be a championship caliber team. But back to the impending series, Jason Worth was about to watch one of the wildest series in Major League Baseball history. The Nationals were headed to Houston for games one and two. Max Scherzer was on the mound for game one. It was a rough start. He allowed a two run double in the first inning. He regained his control though, kept the Astros at bay, earning the win. The Nationals took both games in Texas, but then something nobody expected. They lost the next two back in Washington, D.C. But it was Max who was set to start game five, hoping to give his team a chance to head back to Texas, just one win away from a World Series title. But what no one knew is that Max was hurting. It was awful. Um, I knew my neck, I, um, you know, we'd done some treatment in game four, uh, trying to get ready for game five, um, to get ready and, and um, you know, I went to bed tonight thinking I was, all right, let's hope that treatment works and wake up and I, you know, hopefully this, I feel good and we, and we, we just go. Um, I remember waking up and I could just feel in my trap that, you know, it, it went backwards. <laughs> that we're, that I can't even move my arm right now. Um, I can't even turn my head. Um, I'm like 
hobbling to get upstairs and stuff. So um, I knew I was in a really bad spot. Um, you know, where are you trying to make a start? And it's game five of the World Series. And I've done crazier things and, you know, maybe there's a way to pitch through it. And as I continue to, you know, try to address myself, I couldn't even address myself. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just, um, you know, it, it was just a real bad spot of realizing that, man, I'm, there's just no way I'm gonna be able to make it. He walked down the stairs and just couldn't even move. All he could do was walk. He couldn't do anything else. And I could just see the look in his face. And so I drop everything and go to him and it just, it was just that feeling of knowing what is at stake and this is bad. If you all know Max, um, you know, he obviously he pitched with a broken nose. He's been hurt before. He's gone through things. And um, when he comes in and says that he's hurt this bad, he's hurt. That was Nationals manager Davey Martinez the moment he announced Scherzer would not be pitching game five of the World Series. It was so quiet in that press room. People were in shock. I remember feeling that way walking back to the field. That night in the middle of game five, Jason Wirth, who was there in attendance, went down to the clubhouse to visit his friend. So I, I went down, uh, I went down the clubhouse in the middle of the game. And uh, I mean, he, he looked like he was like 50 years old. And, and uh, not that there's anything wrong with 50 years old, but when, when you're, uh, you know, kind of in the prime of your career in the World Series, that's, that's not the look you want to see. He was, he was not in good shape. I think he just got, you know, off the table, so his eyes were all puffy, and he couldn't, he couldn't move his head, and I was like, I was like, this is, I can't believe this. I just felt like, you know, all was lost, you know, like, I mean, here, you know, not only did he not start the game, now, we're, you know, now they're going to have to go back, you know, losing the game, they're going to have to go back to Houston, I don't think he can pitch, like, it just, you know, obviously a key, com a key cog for the, for the team, and, and, to see him in that shape, it was uh, it was uh, pretty disappointing, and and like I mean, I just felt I felt horrible for him and for the guys because it, it looked like you know like once again like you know like they had no chance. In next week's episode, the aftermath, the national reaction to Max's injury, and behind the scenes perspective on what Scherzer was actually dealing with while trying to keep those championship hopes alive. Thank <laughs> you.